Architectural photography post-production, in particular HDR photography. Is it still relevant? And if so, how can we use it? In this video, I'm going to look at two examples, one interior shoot and one exterior shoot that I've done for two different architectural clients and just how I've used HDR photography to present imagery that they were really pleased with and I was able to create with relatively little fuss. To be honest, I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with HDR over the years. In the early days when it first came out, there was so much promise and I was using it, but I was really disappointed by the results. And if you go online and search HDR imagery, you can see some really good examples of really bad examples. It was never really done particularly well, and as far as using it as part of my workflow for architectural photography went, I left that quite a way back. However, recently I found a piece of software that's actually enabled me to fall back in love with HDR photography and actually create some really pleasing results. So the first thing we need to do is open up Aurora. It's pretty quick to load. That's all it's coming straight off my SSD. That's my solid state drive. We're going to open up the images. So if we come down to the set that we shot of this exterior here and we'll select this series of six. Usually I'm shooting between five and seven. I like to keep an uneven number so you have a central main exposure and then either two above and two below or three above, three below. Um, I will always shoot in advance like more than what you think you're gonna need just in case. Uh, it's better to have more data and throw stuff away when you get back than get back and realize you don't quite have enough to recover the highlights. So I always err on the side of caution, particularly when it's a professional gig. So now it runs through its detecting of the scene type. You can see up here, it will also detect the scene objects. Now it's gonna do a little bit of computation in the background where it will remove some of that ghosting, we hope, of the leaves and their movement. And it will do other things along the way, all in the background, all in the name of presenting with you a very realistic image that you haven't actually had to do anything with yet. So gone are the days of needing a science degree just to understand the HDR software. It's doing so much of the heavy lifting for you and in a way that is aesthetically pleasing. As you can see here, boom, we've got a really great result here. The ghosting of the trees has been eliminated to a large degree. There is still going to be a little bit of movement, but that was in my actual raw file itself. But what we care about here is the actual building, the fact that we can see through the glass and into this amazing kitchen space they've got here. Uh, the blue that's showing up here on the top of this building, that is actually uh, reflected light from the blue swimming pool. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that, the fact that the the color is not the same. Um, but overall, this is a great place to start in terms of having all the tonality that we need to work with. Along the bottom here, you can see that we have collections. If we click that, you can actually come straight to an architectural collection and use any of their presets. Personally, I find they don't always work and I prefer to create my own preset. It's really easy to do once you've made all your adjustments like you would with Lightroom. You can just save that as a user-defined preset. Super easy. But perhaps a good place to start might be within Essential. They have this one which is natural and we can play with that. What I love about all of these presets is just like with the Luminar application, you can apply a preset and rather than being stuck with it at 100%, it's either on or off and you can actually set it based on a slider. So we can have 100% or anywhere, anything in between. So you can just have a hint of the look. If you like it, but you find it too strong at 100%, just dial it right back to where you feel you're happy with it. By playing around with these sliders, let's see if we can actually um, improve this shot any. Let's bring the highlights down, see what happens there. I always like to push sliders around push them to the max either way and just see what sort of result we're getting and then we can dial it in based on that maximum and the fraction that we want of that. Bring the blacks down slightly, 
what's happening if we push our contrast around? I quite actually like reducing the contrast on this image just a little bit. I find that's helping. We can also incre increase the clarity. Often with architecture, things like clarity and structure, you can, you can push that a little bit further than you can with other types of photography. Smart structure, I'm not a big fan of because things start to look a little bit more like the old style fake HDR. So if we do want a little bit of it, I'd suggest only a smidge for a more realistic look. We can do denoising, um, which again will help with things like skies, reducing digital noise in the sky. Uh, LUTs we can add here if we want. So that's a lookup table to give a distinctive look to our image, which we can then, in the same way uh, we could dial back an overall look, we can select something and then dial it back. So for example, if we were to choose, let's see, Spartan, let's go for this. This isn't something I would normally use, but let, for example sake, this is 100%, this is off. We may decide we want to just tickle it in at around 36%. That might be what we're after. So we can do a before and after on any of these by showing or hiding the eyedropper, the eye icon, sorry. Image radiance, oh, this is a great filter. I love this because it, it just sort of gives almost the uh, like an autumn ethereal effect to your imagery. And if that's something you're after, just to give a hint of softness to the image, because sometimes architecture can look really sterile, little, little um, rigid in form, and you can just soften it just with this image radiance slider. So again, I don't suggest using that in as 100%, but sure, you could put a little bit of it in there. Polarizing filter obviously talks to the blues specifically, blues in the sky normally, but um, yeah, you'll just be enhancing those blues. I don't feel we need to do that in this image. HDR details is, is a little bit like sharpening, really. You're either sharpening on a very localized um, area, like this with small, we can do medium, and we can do large. Again, pushing them all the way to 100, we can see exactly what's going on. And of course, that is too much, but we can bring all of these sliders back down to around that sort of 16 point. That's probably even too much, but let's have a look at without and with, without and with. Yeah, I don't mind that. Let's leave that. Now, curves, just like with any software, we can use curves to brighten and darken things. I'm thinking we just take the mid-tones and just brighten this, this up just a little bit. From here we can talk directly into the color channels. So if we wanted to darken down these greens, what we can do is just grab the green and the yellow sliders and just, sorry, desaturate, not darken. Just take some of that color out. But we don't want to do that too, too much because we don't want to use, lose the yellows and the warmth inside the building. We can also dodge and burn, which is quite a nice feature directly in the program. So what we could do is start painting and we can choose either lighten or darken. Let's go for darken here with strength around 20%. And just if you're familiar with Photoshop, we can increase the size of the brush just by using our bracket keys. And here I'm going to darken down the foreground just so it's not stealing our attention away from the main focus of the house. Probably the same here on the driveway just a little bright just through here. So let's darken that down and perhaps even up through the trees here. We could just darken that slightly too. And let's turn that on and off, which is a great idea to do just to see where, where you started and where you've got to. Yep, I'm happy with that. So the vignetting, as with any program, we can dial that, dial that in and darken the corners. In this instance, because there's nothing much going on around this side of the frame or the left-hand side of the frame, top or bottom, I think the vignette is a nice little inclusion. And I'm going to call that one done. Now sure, you may want to do more to this in Photoshop, and you can but I think you'll agree it's actually a really nice base to start from. And now we're not having to worry about anything 
to do with the luminance values and making sure that data is there because it's going to be there locked into this file. We can export it as a 16-bit TIFF so there's a whole heap of information for us to work with if we want to take it further. Now let's look at our second example which is an interior. It's one that I shot for a wool company which is actually pretty big business here in New Zealand. They have an amazing office space that's been designed for them and the architect designers and everything they all came on board wanting imagery. So that's where I came in. I noticed within this space it's very dark in some areas because it's so massive the windows are only around the very exterior and so you get some very bright areas right close to the windows and where the actual office space is but where the reception is and some of the other areas it was quite dark but because we were trying to showcase the interplay between these different areas I needed to show them all off so in the example that I'm going to show you, you have the reception area that was quite dark and also seeing through into where the office workers were which was quite bright but we needed to bring those two brightness levels together into one image and I first of all had a go at doing that with um, luminance masks in Photoshop and achieved pretty good results but it was quite time consuming. Now I want to see whether Aurora can actually leverage the different exposure set and give us a result quickly. So let's take a look. Okay so let's open up our next project we should have a series of exposures and here they are we've got seven of them in this case and as you can see just from the thumbnails and the preview here there's no way that we're getting all of the detail in the ceiling here and all of the luminance detail here in the brightest part of the images similarly if we go to the darker exposures you can see that now we're correctly exposed for where the lights are showing up here on this mossy wall and this picture here but unfortunately we've got nothing going on in the ceiling so let's see what Aurora can do for us let's click open we don't need to align the images because everything was off a tripod we don't need to remove any ghosting because there are no moving parts within the scene so let's just hit create HDR and see what it comes up with boom 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 bitty boom that is a really good result straight out of the box without me having to touch a single adjustment. I really like this. Now, this may not be the perfect image to deliver to the client as a finished piece, but by gosh, it's a hell of a better starting point to go from than what the camera was capturing in the raw files. But let's see if we can improve this slightly. Why don't we go straight to the architectural section and let's just see what the bright interior would do for us. If we click that, straight away that's brightened everything up, but I feel like we're just starting to bleach out on these highlights now. And we really don't want that considering we've gone to a lot of effort to create an HDR image that has all that detail. So let's see if we can't just protect those highlights, which of course we can with the highlight slider but we don't want to muddy everything out, so let's not take that too far. We always have curves that can brighten up the whole image uh, if we need. So things are looking pretty good, just as is, so I'm not going to rock the boat and go too far with this. Clarity, let's, let's push it to 100, bring it all the way off, and just see what we like. I'm thinking just a little smidge of that. Image radiance is already on with this particular preset, and I like it. Let's push it to the top, bring it all the way back down. What you can do is actually say whether you want it to apply just to the shadows um, or, or protect the shadows. And I think we're going to protect the shadows because as radiance increases, the brights get a little more saturated and the darks just get washed out darker. So we don't want to uh, put too much of that in that shadow area. Polarizing filter is unnecessary. The details boost with the HDR details boost is a really great tool for architecture and I just feel like putting in a little bit of that really helps the image along. It's it's like localized sharpening, but um, I feel like it does a good job. So the tone curve here, let's actually just boost, let's boost up those mid-tones because we really want the, uh, the shag pile sheepy <laughs> wall there 
just to be a bit brighter. And again, we just want to protect the highlights. So I'm just going to bring the top of the curve down. What about the shadows? Do we want to boost those up at all? Let's see. Maybe just a little bit, a little smidge. And let's turn it off and on just to make sure we're happy with what we've done. That's before, that's after. Yeah, I'm happy with a brighter image, much more inviting. Dodge and burn. I could be doing a little bit of dodge and burn here, but I'm not going to. Vignette, I'm also going to leave alone. And I'm going to say I'm really happy with that as a starting point. Um, I would certainly proof that to a client. So if they're wanting to see the images before we go too far or before they commit to licensing an image, this is certainly good enough to proof to them. Personally, I'm loving Aurora. I'm thinking it's a really powerful tool for me, for my architectural processing. I've re-embraced HDR photography for my landscapes, which again, I'd kind of parked HDR for a few years and was using other techniques. Um, but I think this is a really, really powerful tool. One way that I think it's gonna benefit me is to actually not just work on this file, but even if I were to use Aurora just to push all of those exposures together into one shot, then that one shot then becomes a layer that I can use in Photoshop in conjunction with the other exposures if need be. So guys, if you want to get yourself a copy of Aurora, I have a discount code. Skylum have actually given me a code ATSKY10, and that will give you $10 off the software. I'm not sure exactly how much it is, but it's not expensive, particularly if you are using this as part of your professional arsenal to deliver shots that are paying you to your clients. So I hope this video has been useful to you guys. Uh, if it has, give it a thumbs up. If it hasn't, uh, you can double click the dislike button and um, I will see you in the next video. If you feel like you wanna share this with friends, please do so. And I thank you for your time, guys. Please leave me a comment. Cheers, guys. Catch you later.